Hey there. If you have already heard this, please skip forward. This is the intro description to the video parts for a page on my website. The page you are likely viewing this on will teach the basics of how to read the different types of plots and seismic charts people use. If there is anything I can add or any mistakes to be corrected, please do not hesitate to contact me. To aid people who have a harder time reading or just those who would rather watch a video, I am adding video versions to the different sections on my read, spectrogram, seismic plots, and more page, which resides under the how to drop down menu on my website. If you are viewing this on YouTube, please scroll to the description box below and click the link to the page. Again, here we are on my website. In the how to drop down menu, it reads spectrograms, seismic plots, and more. You most likely just saw the rest of the page, but this is the last video on the page dealing with the rest of the content. How to read frequency spectral analysis plots. Now these three different types of spectra plots are all from this time frame for this waveform plot above. The image directly above, which I'm showing here, shows one waveform plot and three frequency spectra plots for the same event. Frequency spectra plots are great, but are almost always used in conjunction with waveform plots and spectrogram plots. The three spectra analysis plots shown here are three different types you may encounter and are from the one waveform plot of the low frequency event previously talked about shown in the beginning of the image. Right here. Frequency spectra plots are somewhat different than their siblings, seismograms and spectrograms. Both seismograms and spectrograms record data a little differently. However, they both record time period horizontally. Spectra analysis plots actually do not record any type of time frame whatsoever. They simply show you the power and frequency of the entire time period that you have selected. In this case, the entire time period from start to finish of the waveform plot given. And again, it will show the frequency, and this is how you can determine dominant frequencies of events by using spectra plots. This spectra plot at the bottom is usually what I use for when frequencies are a little bit higher. But if frequencies, like let's say a low frequency earthquake happens with dominant frequencies between 1 hertz and 3 hertz, I will use this plot right here. They record frequency horizontally and power vertically. There are a few different ways that you can view the spectra analysis window in Swarm. The first spectra analysis shown is less used by me, and it's this one right here. It is achieved by having both log power and log frequency checked within the spectra settings, within the wave settings in Swarm. I prefer using the last two types of spectra analysis. The second spectra analysis plot shown, this one right here, is achieved by having log power unchecked and log frequency checked within the spectra settings in Swarm. I do not know what they mean though by log power, since it still records power vertically no matter what you do, and it wouldn't be spectra analysis without recording power. This is what I use the most for lower frequency activity. You can easily tell by looking at the spectra plot that this event was a low frequency event with dominant frequencies between about 1 to 2 hertz or so. The lines they provide are helpful. The third spectra analysis window, which is this one right here, is achieved by having both log power and log frequency unchecked within the spectra settings in Swarm. This is a popular version of a spectra plot, and I use this for more mid to high range frequency activity. Actually, I use them in conjunction with each other sometimes, and again, it records power vertically and frequency horizontally, allowing you to identify dominant frequencies. When viewing an event with spectra analysis, I like to use the top three spikes I see to determine dominant frequencies. The most dominant frequency will be the one with the largest spike. In this case, this one right here. And that is it for this page so far. Well, I do have one little tiny thing afterwards, but we learned how to read online webby quarters and heli quarters and how to read the multiple different types of seismic plots you will encounter in your endeavors. We learned waveform seismogram plots record amplitude, the power of ground motion, vertically, time period horizontally, and frequency. We also learned spectrogram plots record frequency vertically, time period horizontally, and the color range from blue weakest to red strongest is power usually decibels in dB as shown in the program Swarm. We also learned about the multiple different types of spectra analysis plots, but also that spectra analysis does not record time period at all, but records power vertically and frequency horizontally for any time period you select for the analysis window. I hope these explanations helped and this page will be added to here and there as new information or seismic changes come to light, blah blah blah. 
But before I end, there is one last part to this page. So what are the red marks on online seismic charts, and why do the size of the events seem to change when bigger activity is seen? Well, to start, there is such a thing called rescale. The data itself is never manipulated, but only how it looks. Some online web recorders use this, and when you see, let's say, a large 4.0 or so earthquake strike near Yellowstone, you will notice that some of the smaller earthquakes, that would usually look a little bit bigger, look smaller. I used to think this was done intentionally to keep people from worrying, but I then realized that it was an automatic response to incoming data that was much larger, and once you understand this, then there's no reason you're going to be worried or not worried. It's just, you know, it's just how the technology works. This is called rescale and can be done in many different ways on the program swarm or even completely removed if you wish. Now the red marks you may see on any helicorder or online webicorder are amplitudes that have been clipped because they went beyond a preset margin. This is so smaller activity is not completely hidden by large spikes many earthquakes can produce. However, beware, these marks are not for earthquakes only. Any amplitude, regardless of the source that goes beyond the preset setting, will be cut. Whenever it is cut, it is marked in red to notify you the amplitudes have been cut on the chart. Please note that this does not affect the data in any way, shape, or form. If you would like a few examples, please watch this quick 3.5 minute video directly below. There is no sound, but there is text, so you will understand what is going on. Is anything missing from this page or there is a mistake, please contact me and I'll change it immediately once the mistake is confirmed. So do you see this video right here that I gave as an example for amplitude clippings and amplitude scaling? Well, I'm not going to show this right now because if you're on my website watching this, you could obviously just press play. But if you're viewing this video on YouTube right now, then I should just go into the description box below and click the link to the Amplitude Clippings and Amplitude Scaling video if you wish to see it. Well, that's it for this page. Again, this page will be added to here and there when new information or possibilities come to light. But this is it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope this helped a lot of you understand how to do a bunch of the different stuff. And I am going to be doing video parts for many other sections on my website since people have told me they would much rather watch a video. And so, you know, that's cool because I kind of like making videos. So hope you all had a great day and God bless.